And so when you're ready, just find yourself in a seated position down on your mat. Just in a pose where you can really settle down and, and start to get grounded. Notice your breath. Yeah, if you want to, like me, you can start with some big sighs. And inhale through the nose and a sigh out through the mouth. And let's take a stretch. Reaching up through the hands, stretching the fingers away, making space between them. Bring your hands together, weave those hands together in a basket, turn them inside out, press them away. Let's lift our gaze towards our hands, coming into a little back bend now, feeling that stretch across the front of the body, also a little compression through the back, but just minimal compression. And then rising back out, we're going to tuck our chin, we're going to take one of the wrists in the hands, so now we can minimize that curve of the low back by strengthening and lifting through our belly. And then just take a lean over to one side, stretching through the armpit, through the underneath of the arm, it's been a beautiful day today. I had the pleasure of walking through the trees, walking through the bush down to, I've done a trek to the beach, which was wonderful. I hope you've had some outdoor time today. I hope you've had some connecting with nature. Let's come back to center. Let's take the other hand and other wrist in the hand and take a little lean to the side. And if it has been a day where you haven't managed to connect to nature, really, if you have kind of been inside, then. I challenge you after your practice to even take a look out your window, take a look at the trees around you, see if you can find something green to focus on, <laughs> something green to connect with, and if not, hey, there's the sky, right? Let's come back to center. From here again, stretching those fingers, we're gonna reach our hands out wide so that our arms are parallel to the floor. And then we're gonna coil our hands backwards towards the back of the body and take a stretch. And can you feel that stretch all the way, maybe down all the way into your little finger? Right, so we're coiling our hands towards the back, feeling that stretch all the way down into the little finger. And then turn your hands back towards the front. We're going to reach the left arm across towards the right, turning with it, yeah, and then taking a twist out to the side. Now my hips are still angled really towards the front of my mat as much as possible. And so it might be for you that that left hand doesn't make it all the way to the right, but we're just exploring this motion through our spine. And then open back up towards the center, yeah, and reaching out towards the other side. Yeah, maybe you can reach that hand right across, maybe that minimizes um, how far around your hands are twisting, or maybe it feels better for you to have some space between the hands as you bring your gaze out towards the left fingers, as you reach that right arm across and just explore this movement. <sighs> Back around to centre, reach your arms. This time we're going to roll our hands down towards the floor and then back towards the back of the body. So we're spiralling those hands in the other direction now. For me, I've got a little bit more movement this way. Maybe you have as well. Just exploring that range of movement, reaching those fingers a little further away, finding that stretch down through the elbows. Wonderful, yeah? Now, if you're kneeling like I am with something underneath you, then the pose we take next is going to be a little bit more like a child's pose. If you're in seated cross-legged, it's going to be a stretch of the hip. Either is fine, okay? And so when you're ready, reaching those hands back up towards the sky and taking a little fold forwards. So remember, if you're in seated cross-legged, you're probably not going to release down to the floor as far as I am, so don't sweat it. Just notice a little stretch through your hip. If you're in child's pose, Noticing the stretch along your spine, just enjoying whichever stretch it is you're experiencing. Noticing your breath. And we're staying here for a couple more breaths. And then we're rising back up again. Now, if you're in seated cross-legged, I want you to change the cross of your legs so that the other foot is to the top or the front. If you're like me and you're in a little child's pose, then can you bring your knees a little wider? And again, we're going to start to fold forward, creeping forwards down over the floor. Yeah, maybe lowering forehead down to the ground. If you didn't have a rolled up blanket and you were still kneeling, that's all good as well. You've probably got more chance of your hips drawing down towards your heels than I have. So whatever works for you. Yeah, this is your practice, just exploring the movements of your body, enjoying a few gentle stretches.
And then we're rising back up again. Now, if you're in seated cross-legged pose, then come over to hands and knees. If you're in that little child's pose, then it's just a bit of an easier transition to hands and knees. And from here, we're going to take a step of the left foot away, pressing our left heel, feel, finding that lovely space down the back of your left heel. Yeah. And then we're going to take that opposite kind of movement. We're going to see if we can lift that left leg. Now we're squeezing the left glute. But at the same time, can you squeeze and wrap the muscles of your belly so that your back is supported, so that you're nice and supported here. Lower those toes back down towards the floor. Now, can we um, connect that with the breath and take it twice more? So on the inhale, let's lift our left leg. And on the exhale, let's really slowly lower it back down with control. Yeah? One more time, we're going to inhale, lift that left leg. Strong through the belly, strong through the glute. And on the exhale, slowly lowering that leg back down. Bringing that knee back beside the right knee. Yeah, staying here for a moment. And then just stepping that right foot away. Pressing down, out through the heel. Feeling the heel drawing down towards the floor. Feeling that lovely stretch down the back of your leg. And then again for the movement, right? We're going to lift that right leg. We're just pausing here for a while, just exploring what this is. Can you wrap the muscles of your belly a little stronger, right? Can you lift that leg a little more, squeezing through the right glute, even through your hips towards the floor? And then we're going to move through that twice. So we're going to exhale and lower our right foot towards the floor. And we're going to inhale left. Now the exhale, we lower that foot back down towards the floor. We inhale and lift. We exhale that foot towards the floor. And then that knee back towards the left knee. Let's tuck both of the toes and press back to downward facing dog. Now, in this downward facing dog, again, we're going to take a little pulsing movement, but if it feels a little bit too strong for you to take that pulsing movement, then you don't have to. You can stay here in down dog as it is. Yeah, you can even lower your knees back down to the floor and take hands and knees if down dog's feeling a little too strong. But the movement is this. On the inhale, we're going to float our left leg up behind us. And then on the exhale, we're going to lower that left foot back down to the floor. We're going to inhale the right leg up behind us. And then we're going to exhale that right foot back down towards the floor. Now let's inhale our knees to hover off the ground. And then let's exhale back into downward facing dog. And then again, we're going to inhale the left leg back behind us. And we're going to exhale that left leg back down to the floor. Nice and slow, right? Other side, we're going to inhale that right leg back behind us. And then we're going to exhale that right leg back down to the floor. Keep pressing nice and strong into your hands. We're going to inhale our knees down to hover off the ground. They can lower all the way down if you need them. And then we're going to exhale and press back once more either side. We're going to inhale the left leg back behind us. Strong down into your hands. Exhale that left foot back down to the floor. We're going to inhale that right leg back behind us. And then we exhale that right leg back down to the floor. Last time, we're going to inhale, lower our knees to hover off the ground. That's it. And then we exhale those knees back into downward facing dog. Yeah, let's lower those knees back down to the floor again. We're going to step our left foot forwards between the hands. And we're just going to shimmy that right leg back a little. Yeah. Not so that we're hanging out on the hips too much. We're still pressing down nice and strong into the feet. If you want, you can untuck those right toes or you might want to have them tucked under. And then slowly we're going to glide our hands towards the sky. We're going to lift our gaze and we're going to explore this lovely stretch through the right hip flexor. Yeah, now for me, this area, this um, front of my leg, it has an area of tension, right? And so these might be poses that occasionally I want to avoid, but I'm going to see if I can keep maintaining balance by keeping um, length down the front of my body as well as the back. Yeah, and so there's that observation continually in your practice. 
noticing if something is um, a pose you're avoiding just because you know it's a challenge it's okay if you're avoiding it because it's painful okay we don't want to be pushing into painful poses but sometimes challenging poses are sometimes something that we can feel into we can lean into that challenge and see if it's a good challenge or not we're staying here for another breath and then hands down to the floor we're just going to step that left knee back to the right and we're going to step that right foot forward yeah we shimmy that left knee back a little if you need to right ankle underneath the right knee slowly lifting finding that stretch down the front of your left leg now maybe you want to keep your hands down on the floor you want to keep your elbows resting on the right knee or maybe you want to float your hands up nice and strong down into the back of the left leg that's going to support you in this little back bend we want to keep that nice strong connection into the contraction as well as the lengthening on the opposite side Yeah, so again, if it feels like a challenge, right, if you're like me and this is an area of tension, we're leaning into that challenge. We're exploring whether it's a good challenge, whether it feels okay. And then we're coming back, hands down beside the foot. We're going to come back into hands and knees. Let's tuck our toes, lift our hips, press back into downward facing dog, and then just take a couple of walks with your knees, a couple of drawing of your heels down towards the floor. And from here, we're going to creep our feet forwards today to come to forward fold at the front of our back. Yeah, so some of our practice today is that concept around leaning into challenges. Leaning into challenges and just establishing whether they're a good challenge, whether they're a challenge you want to take, or whether it's too much. You know, because we want that risk to be worth it. We don't want um, the, the risk to outweigh the benefit of a pose, right? So softening down. And by risk, I don't mean risking, <laughs> risking damage to your body. It's just that feeling of pressing into something, you know, finding yourself in a pose that may be a little challenging and you want to rock straight back into your comfort zone. And that's okay. Right? There are some days where we really want to encourage just sitting within our comfort zone. And there are some days where we want to explore challenge. And we want to explore whether these are physical, um, physical little, little restrictions, whether we want to listen to the sensations, or whether this is something that's happening in our mind. We just want to explore that. We want to listen to our body and avoid any pain. But we want to know when it's our brain saying, oh, no, I'm too frightened, and explore that emotion. Let's rise up to halfway lift, rounded down into the soles of the feet, pressing down, finding the floor underneath your toes, yeah, as well as your heels. Let's stay here for a breath. And then on your exhale, soften back down into forward fold. Bend your knees, reach those hands, come to your awkward chair. Sit down a little deeper in this pose. We're going to take cactus arms here, right? So the movement is going to be in our little chair. And then we're going to inhale and we're going to reach our hands out into cactus arms. And then we're going to exhale and squeeze them together, but we're going to keep our shoulders drawn back a little, right? So we inhale and we reach out into our little cactus arms. And with those shoulders nice and um, aligned, we're going to draw those arms together on the exhale and squeeze. One more time, let's inhale, reach those hands out. Then we take them a little further. And then exhale, still nice and strong through your belly, pressing your hands together, your elbows together. Let's stay here in this squeeze. Now how strong and lifted is that belly? Are you still able to breathe? Let's rise up to stand. And we're gonna stay here in our Tadasana for a few breaths. And in your mountain, find your feet. And notice that there are ways of connecting a little more deeply down towards the earth. Ways of grounding down. And that as you bring your attention to that grounding down, that yielding down towards the floor, maybe you can feel a little bit more freedom in your breath. Just observe, is that happening for you? Breathing through your nose if you can. Right, and breathing through your nose for the rest of the practice, if you can. 
But let's see if we can connect some movement really strongly with the breath. We're going to see if we can start the breath first and then start the movement. So inhaling through your nose, sweeping your hands towards the sky, lifting your gaze. Exhaling through the nose, folding forwards all the way down into forward fold. Wonderful. Inhale, lift your gaze. Exhale, soften back down into forward fold. That's it for now. Inhale, come to halfway lift. Exhale, back down into forward fold. You're starting that breath before the movement. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Bend your knees, press your hands, step your feet back on an inhale to plank pose. Lower your knees if you need to, keep breathing long and smooth, just because I've paused in that breath instruction doesn't mean I want you to pause in your breath, okay? I want you to keep breathing. Yeah, and then when you're ready, we're going to just point our elbows back towards our toes and we're going to lower down towards the floor. Maybe you can take a moment to hover here and then lower all the way down. Inhale, lift to cobra. Now another little back bend. We're playing around with a few back bends today. So we're going to stay here in this little mini cobra and we're going to bend our knees. Now do you feel a lovely stretch down the front of your thighs? Right. Remember, these are my areas of tension. Okay, maybe they're yours, maybe not. We're going to reach around and see if we can take hold of our feet. And maybe from there, we can lift into a little bow, lifting our knees up off the floor a little, lifting our gaze, but still staying nice and grounded in the breath. And staying here for another breath. And then soften everything back down towards the floor. That's it. We're going to stay here for a breath, just letting that back settle. And then we're going to press down into our hands, tuck the toes. Let's come up through hands and knees. And rock back into child's toes. What a lovely release through the low back. Yeah. In child's pose, remember it's okay if you need your fists underneath your forehead. Support yourself. Modify your practice so that it works for your body. And then we're ready to start moving again. So inhale, come up to hands and knees. Exhale, back to downward facing dog. This time we're going to walk our hands back to our feet so that we're in forward fold at the back of our mat. We're going to exhale and soften a little deeper into forward fold and we're going to inhale and float up the way towards halfway lift, right? So let's take that again. We exhale and soften a little deeper into forward fold and then we inhale and rise up a little towards halfway lift. One more time, exhale, down into forward fold, inhale, rise up into halfway lift. And then let's take an awkward chair on the exhale from halfway lift. Wonderful, let's walk those feet a little closer together. So that the inside of our legs are pressing towards each other and then bring your hands down into prayer in front of your heart space. Can you sink a little lower? Can you sit down a little deeper into this chair? And then keeping those hips squared towards the front, how does it feel to glide one elbow down towards the thigh? Right, notice I didn't say opposite thigh. And I only said towards, it might not get there. That's okay, we're just turning our gaze towards the opposite shoulder. And we're noticing as we do that our waist strengthens and engages. And with the exhale, it draws in a little. We're staying here for another breath. And then let's unwind and rise back up. Keep those feet nice and close. This is our, um, our funny little tarasana with feet together, not one we often take. And so notice that connection down to the floor. Do you feel a little off center? Right, it's not a pose that I'm often in, so it often feels like it lifts my, um, lifts my energy a little.
hands. And then we're coming through to the other side. So we're going to bring hands into prayer in front of our heart space. Again, take that little squeeze through your legs and lower down into a little seated pose. Keep your hands in front of your heart space, in front of your sternum, right in the center of your breastplate. And then just spiraling around again, maybe you can bring your elbow down towards one of your thighs. Uh, and with each exhale, maybe you can squeeze a little further, but you're not forcing yourself around. You're just noticing where you want to go, and your gaze is coming out over your opposite shoulder. And again, we're staying here for a couple of breaths. And we're noticing that lovely little squeezing that's happening through the waist. Let's rise up to stand. This time we're going to bring those feet a little wider, sit bone distance apart. Let's bring them wider again. Let's bring them all the way to the edges of our mat, if you've got a mat. Otherwise, it's wider than the edges of your body. Yeah. How does this pose feel? We've come through Tadasana with our feet sit bone distance, Tadasana with our feet narrow, and this pose with our feet wide. Does one serve a little better at connecting you down towards the floor? Just notice. Just noticing. From here, we're going to inhale, sweep our hands towards the ceiling, and we're going to exhale and swan dive forwards into forward fold, bend those knees. Now, now what happened to you there? Did your knees want to roll towards each other? Let's keep them controlled by pressing our little toes down into the floor. Yeah, and then we're going to bring our elbows to rest just above our knees. And we're going to see what it is to have our sit bones about parallel to the floor, about parallel to the knees from the floor, right? We've got that line from sit bones to knees, but it's about the same line as the floor. And in this pose, there's a little squeezing happening through your pelvic floor. Imagine the line from your tail to the crown of your head and see if you can extend. Just one more breath here. And then we're bringing our hands down to the floor and we're going to creep them forwards. Now do what you need to to get them here. Now in this little wide-legged uh, downward facing dog, how does that feel for you? Let's rock from one foot to the other. Do you feel a little bit of a stretch down through the outside of your heel? If it's too much, bring your feet close again. Now from here we're going to lower our knees and we're going to hover them off the ground. Yeah, and then we're going to lift them back up again. Does that feel all right? Just notice. We're going to lower our knees again to hover them off the ground, and we're going to lift them back up behind us. Now this time we're going to lower them all the way down to the floor. And we're going to have them sit bone distance apart, which means our feet are a little wider. Now, now, if you need to or want to sit up on a blanket or a cushion, so we're going to come and sit back. And maybe you can sit back in between your feet, right? Or maybe you need something to prop you up. Just be so compassionate with your body here. Right, and we're in a little version of hero pose. And so in hero pose, our knees are quite close but our feet are a little wider. And for some people, it just doesn't work for your knees, right? So be really compassionate and understanding. If that doesn't work for your knees, sit up on something, elevate yourself on a block, on a blanket, on a cushion, right? Or just come to kneeling or just have your legs extended and, and forget hero pose completely. It's okay. Now, if you're in this hero pose with me, what you might want to do is take a little lean back. Right. <laughs> now from here, what you might want to do is lean a little forward, lean a little further. But remember what I said, some people's bodies move like this, some people's bodies do not. I'm not going to go any further than this because I can't see you and I don't want you to go any further than this if it doesn't feel okay. But if, you're, if you know you're okay in hero pose, lowering down to the floor, by all means do. Slowly, slowly, we're going to rise back up to our hero's pose. So we're seated again between the knees, and then we're going to pop up 
bring this feet together, toes together, knees draw out wider now. Now and then let's soften down between the legs, feeling that lovely um, release through the low back. Staying here in this child's pose for a couple of breaths. That's it. And then from here, we're going to rise up to hands and knees. We're going to bring our feet a little wider, sit bone distance apart only, and then we're going to press back into downward facing dog. Now from downward facing dog, we're going to creep our hands back and our feet forward so that we're in the middle of our mats, and then we're going to swan dive up to standing. That's it. We're going to ground down into the sole of our left foot. And imagine down into this left foot that you're sinking it down towards the just just a little deeper into the earth so that the earth is soft and yielding and you're softening down. And then from here, just pick your right foot up and just swing it out in front of you. Cross it across. Yeah, so let me show you that what that looks like. Cross it across. Swing it out. Swing it back a little. Swing it forwards. Cross it across, swing it out, swing it back a little. One more time, so we're moving through that three. We're going to swing it forwards, we're going to swing it across, we're going to swing it out, and then we're going to swing it back. And then from here, with that foot back, hopefully we're really grounded down into that left foot. We're going to see if we can take hold of our right foot behind us. And then we're going to take a little lean forward. Yeah, how is this feeling? Only as much as you feel supported, Joe, taking this little lean forward, reaching that right foot back behind you, maybe sweeping that hand a little higher, and pressing that foot into your right hand, you're taking this little mini version of a dancer's pose. Just And then rising back up again. Now, was that a challenge that you wanted? Both feet back down on the floor. Was that as a challenging pose? Was it pressure, pressing into some places of fear? You don't have to go there, right? Sometimes it's supportive, sometimes it's not. Just finding your feet back down on the ground, letting that connection ground you and ease your breath. Right now, I showed you from the front before. I'm going to show you from the side this time. What we're going to do is we're going to rock our weight down into our right foot and we're going to see if we can imagine that that right foot is sinking, descending down into the floor a little further. How can you press it a little more deeply so that you're pressing down into your mat or the carpet, it's easing away from you. And then we're floating that left foot for this. We're crossing it across the body a little, yeah, and out to the side, and then back behind us. Just a little kickback. We're bringing it forwards, crossing it across the body. You connect us with the breath. Maybe the inhale, we kick it back out. And the exhale, we bring it back. With the inhale, we bring it forwards. With the exhale across. With the inhale to the side. And this time as we exhale and bring it back, we're going to see if we can take hold of that foot in our hand. Yeah, and so our first action is drawing that left knee back towards the right knee, finding that stretch down the front of the left leg. Finding that space, first of all, before you worry about any folding forwards, and maybe this is where you stay. Or maybe you start to take a little lean forwards, reaching that right arm out in front of your palm towards the ceiling and pressing that left foot into your left hand, finding the arch of your back, finding the length down the front of your body, strong and powerful, fiery and alive. Staying here for another breath. Rising back up to stand. How did that feel for you? Was it okay? Feet down on the ground. <laughs> Notice your breath. Notice that connection of your feet down to the floor. OK, 
Yeah, this is a really interesting space for me to be connecting with my feet down to the floor because the ground underneath me is a little uneven. And so I can feel all of those textures, those levels underneath me. And so maybe you don't have that where you are, but you can still feel the, the ground underneath you. You can still press down into the feet and just really connect with the earth below. And as you do, maybe you can feel that there's this release of your breath, that your fire kind of just softens a little. And notice your breath once more. And then inhale, hands towards the sky, lift your gaze. Exhale, swan dive forwards. Yeah, and if you're in the center of your mat again, what we're going to do is we're going to get our hands towards the front, our feet towards the back and downward facing dog. And then get too caught up on specifics, just finding yourself in down dog on your mat. And from down dog, rocking forward so that you come into plank pose. And from plank pose, if you can, with your knees raised, otherwise lower those knees and lower down to the floor. Inhale, lift into cobra. And again, we're taking that little stretch through the front of the body, bend your knees. If it feels okay, take hold of your feet. If it still feels okay, lift. Coming into a little bow shape. Yeah, but nice and supported. I think those knees rock away from each other too much. Keep them aligned. And there's still that sit bone distance between them. And then soften back down to the floor. Come through hands and knees. And back to child's pose. Now in your child's pose, just notice. Notice your breath. How is it feeling? As you breathe through your nose, drawing your breath down into your body, feeling that expansion. And as you exhale, feeling everything soften and release back out again. As you inhale, drawing in that pull, that tidal pull of your pelvic floor expands as the breath draws into the body and everything makes way for it. And as you exhale, everything moves back into the spaces that it was in before. Right? So as you inhale, drawing the breath down into your body, the body accommodates, it makes way. And as you exhale, it squeezes back out again or moves its way back out again and everything shuffles back. As you inhale, feeling that breath, draw in and expand your body. And as you exhale, feeling that toning as everything draws back into its normal place. It's normal 50% of the time place. Yeah, so just noticing your breath. Do you still feel okay? When you're ready, we're going to come up to hands and knees. And then from hands and knees, we're going to come over into a seated pose with our legs extended out in front of us. Now, what I'd love you to do is have your hands behind you, supporting you, leaning your weight into them. Or a bit of your weight, right? A lot of your weight's down on the floor. <laughs> but you're supporting yourself here. So we're not turning this into a forward fold just now. Instead, what we're going to do is we're just going to pound our legs down on the floor, giving them a shake, seeing if we can really massage out the back of our legs. That's it. Feeling that tip, hearing that tip, tip, tapping, that movement of your legs down on the floor. And then we're going to work on the front of our legs. So as much as you can, we're going to rub out the thighs. We're going to rub down towards the lower legs. Yeah, just as far as you can reach is all fine. So we're going to have some more opportunity to get down there. Yeah, around the sides of your legs. Can you get some movement going there? The heel of your, the heel of your palm, that thumb muscle is a really good one. So just rubbing down towards your knee and back up again. And then can you give your thighs a little shake? Yeah, get that movement going. Shaking out. And if you can, right, as far as you can down your legs, but this isn't a chance for you to beat yourself up about not being able to reach far down your legs. And then give the, bend those knees. Put the soles of your feet down on the floor and really get into the calves, around your ankles, top of your feet. Underneath your feet, lift those feet up, give them a squeeze. Now remember, if you're still unable to get down to your feet, even with your knees bent, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Just appreciate your body for what it is. Whatever shape, you know, whatever size, whatever movements you have, this is your body. Spend some time to love it. 
and then through to the other legs. So I like it to have one leg extended, one leg bent. You might like both legs bent, but then I just massage out. Then the heels of the palms to really get some movement going through the lower leg, through your shoe path. No, it doesn't feel like someone else giving you a massage, but you know there's still that lovely action of release of softening down under the fingers. We can still appreciate ourselves and give ourselves a bit of movement, a bit of release. And then we're taking hold of the foot if you can get there, massaging out your foot. It's okay if you can't, right? Getting those toes moving. Wonderful. And then from here, we're going to make our way down to the floor. We're going to spend quite a bit of time down on the ground tonight, just really letting go, finding some release. So roll over onto your side. And roll over onto your back. Now the reason that, um, that a practice based around challenge has some poses for relying and spending some time just quietly enjoying certain things is because sometimes the strong poses are not the challenge. Sometimes the act of giving yourself a bit of a massage, a bit of relief, is the challenge. Sometimes taking a little moment to stretch and be still is the challenge. So we're just exploring, what is that challenge? Can we lean into it? Does it feel okay? So bend both of your knees, soles of your feet down on the floor, lift up your left foot and pop your left ankle on top of your right thigh. And this might be your pose. You might need to glide that right foot a little further away even. Or you might be able to wrap your hands around that right thigh and hug it towards you. Flex your feet. Now again in this space, notice your breath. Notice your connection down towards the earth. Notice the parts of your body where you are feeling a little stretch, where there is some tension that is being released. And that the opposite action to that release, that lengthening, is to contract a little. And still breathing through your nose, maybe you're making that little sound, the oceanic breath. Or maybe it's enough to really find this deep connection to the earth. Maybe it's enough to be still. Now from here, we're going to pop that right foot back down on the floor. We're going to glide that left foot off and pop that left foot down. Before we come to the other side, though, we're just going to press the soles of the feet together and we're just going to take recline butterfly pose with those knees resting. Out. Again, notice your connection to the floor. It might have changed a little bit now. You might be more grounded. You might be less. Just notice. Can you yield a little more? Can you connect a little more down towards the earth and soften and release? One more breath in this space. and then soles of the feet back down. We're going to lift our right foot and we're going to place our right ankle on top of our left side. This might be your pose, right? If it is, stay here. Maybe you need to slide that left leg a little further away. Or you might be able to wrap your hands around that left thigh and hug it a little closer to you. Feeling that stretch down through your right hip. Your feet are flexed. And you can still find that deep connection to the earth. Can you deepen it a little more? And you find the spaces in your body that are tight, that are taking, having a stretch, that you're feeling a nice stretch happening in. 
And is there a way for you to create a little more freedom? There? Is that by contracting on the opposite side of that muscle? Is it by softening a little more, flexing your feet, or easing out of the pose slightly? What is it? And again, we're going to pop that left foot down on the floor. We're going to pop the right foot down as well. And again, we're going to take reclined butterfly pose. Now, this time we're going to rest one hand low on our belly, one hand just up on our solar plexus. But depending on how your body rests down on the floor, depending on your proportions, you might have your hands a little further down to the sides. No worry. Just notice your feet. So as you inhale, notice the rise of your hands. And as you exhale, notice that they sink back down. And that's all, just noticing. And then drawing those knees back towards each other, bring your hands down beside you. You might need to step your feet a little closer now so that your ankles are pretty much under your knees. And then we're going to inhale. And as we exhale, we're going to squeeze our belly button down towards the floor a little. We coil our tail under, our pelvis rocks back. Yeah, so back as if your pelvis was a bowl of water and you're tipping back towards the floor now, right, through the top of your pelvis. We're going to stay here for a bit that with that real deep connection down to the floor. And it's on an exhale that we're going to move upwards. So as you exhale now, coiling your tail under a little further, feeling this little lift through the body, lifting your hips towards the ceiling. And once you've reached that full extension, just as high as you can lift the hips, we're going to stay here for a couple of breaths. Then pressing down into the soles of the feet, maybe you've got a little more space to lift. And then again on the exhale, we're moving down. So on the exhale, coil your tail under, slowly lowering down towards the floor, belly button drawing towards the spine, lowering the hips back down. That's it. Stay here for a breath. Notice that breath. Now from here, if you want, we're going to prepare for Shavasana now. Remember I was talking about that challenge of being still. And so if you want, you can put something in on. You can get cozy if you need to. But with as little disturbance to the body. And then coming back down to lie on your back. Now if, like me, you have a rolled up blanket, if you've started to bring those to your practices with me, hooray. <laughs> yeah, then you can use that blanket however you need it. It might be that you have it underneath the back of your knees. It might be that you rest something just low under the back of your head. It may be um, just like if you're a pregnancy when you lie on your side and you rest over a bolster. Yeah, maybe you take that pose. Or maybe you lie down on your back with the blanket underneath the back of your knees. Feeling supported. But whatever option it is that you take, just settling yourself down into Shavasana. Yeah, but there are a few options there. And so take the one that serves best to allow you to rest, to find stillness. Soften, letting go, closing your eyes, finding that wonderful connection to the earth. And as you find that deep connection to the earth, you allow your body to soften and release, you let go.
and you are still aware of sounds. So that maybe it's the sounds around you, maybe it's the sounds within you. So maybe you can hear your breath as it makes your way down into your body and back out again. Just notice for a moment the sounds. And now notice that even with your eyes closed, you're aware that there are little spots of light or colour on your eyelids. Even with your eyes closed, there is still sight. Notice now that as you inhale through your nose, that you can feel the temperature of the air at the end of your nose. And that as you exhale, you can feel the temperature of your body. As you inhale, you're drawing in nature, nurture, nourishment. As you exhale, you're letting go of anything that does not serve you. As you inhale, knowing that you're nourishing every one of your cells. And as you exhale, you're releasing anything that does not serve you in the physical, emotional, or spiritual sense. And so with your breath, you deepen your connection to the earth. With that connection is that remembering that you are nature. And so you soften and release even more, letting go all of your muscles release. The muscles of your face, of your scalp, of your neck and throat. And you soften across your shoulders and that relaxation rolls down your arms to your fingers and your thumbs. And back up again as you soften and release your palms, your wrists, your lower arms, your elbows, and your upper arms. Softening and relaxing your armpits, your rib cage, your waist, and your hips. And that softness rolls down your legs to your toes. And back up again as you soften your feet your ankles, your lower legs, your knees, and your upper legs. <coughs> Softening now across your pelvis. Relaxing your back between your shoulder blades. Softening and releasing your chest and your belly. And as you find yourself completely relaxed, soft and connected, <coughs> you deepen your connection and you surrender completely to Shavasana.
noticing the breath. Rise and fall of your body as you breathe. Notice again the little lights on the other side of your eyelids. Gently becoming aware of the sounds around you. When you're ready, just increasing your movement a little beyond the breath. And making your way over onto your side. If you're not already there. And then in time, just making your way to a seated position. And again, finding that connection down to the earth. Knowing that you are a child of nature, that everything is just as it should be. There could be no other way. That you are just as you should be. You could be no other way. Let go. It was wonderful to practice with you. Have you practiced with me tonight? Namaste.